Hello everyone. Long ago, there was a wise and good king. He loved his people. He wanted to know how they lived. So often he dressed himself in the clothes of a working man or a beggar and went to the homes of the poor. No one whom he visited knew that he was their king. One time he visited a very poor man who lived in a hut. He ate the coarse food the poor man ate. He spoke cheerful kind words to him. Then he left. Later he visited the poor man again and disclosed his identity by saying, I am your king and I was the one who visited you a few days ago. The king thought the man would surely ask for some gift or favor, but he didn't. Instead he said, Oh, my king, you left your royal palace and comforts to come and visit me in this dark, dreary place. You ate the coarse food I ate. You spoke kind words to me. You brought gladness to my heart. To others, you have given your rich gifts, but to me, you have given yourself. Thank you. Friends, God's core message to you and me from the cross is, I love you. Every time we look at the cross, we must gratefully remember in the depths of our soul how great is God's love for us. But I'm afraid many of us have lost the focus of God's message to us. Many people view Jesus only as a good man, great teacher, miracle worker and provider of our needs and not as the Lord of all creation and the Savior of humankind. We are struggling in our Christian life because we no longer understand and appreciate God's love for us. The cross is God's statement of just how much He loves us. As we enter into the third week of Lent, it is only appropriate that we contemplate the love of Christ displayed on the cross. On the first Sunday of Lent, we meditated upon the temptations of Jesus in the wilderness, which revealed the truth of Jesus' humanity. Jesus' temptations teach us not only to beware of the worldly things, they can distract us from the path that God has set for us, but also to use the word of God to resist temptations. However, obedience to God inevitably would bring affliction, suffering and hardship, which otherwise we would not have. Last Sunday, we read words of encouragement from Paul in his letter to his friend Timothy. He urges us to endure all suffering with the power of God and reminds us that the gospel of Jesus is worth suffering for because God has saved us by sacrificing his only son Jesus on the cross and by calling us to be holy. But people might ask, why was it necessary for Jesus to die? Why did he need to die for our sins? Why did God not simply take our sin away? Jesus had to die for our sins so that we could be forgiven. Jesus paid for our sins because he loves us. However, it is impossible for us with our human mind to fathom the love that God has for us because God's love is different from human love. God's love transcends human love to a point that it is hard for us to comprehend. There are many ways that God has expressed his love for us. And the Bible is full of examples of how God manifests His love in the work of creation, in Jesus' teachings, healings, miracles and the sacrifice of Himself on the cross. Today's second reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans is one of the greatest texts testifying to God's love. However, 
In order for us to grasp and experience God's love, we must intentionally and sincerely declare our faith and hope in Him, who is the embodiment of pure and unconditional love. Paul writes, Since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith to this grace in which we stand and we boast in hope of the glory of God. In other words, Paul tells us that our faith gives God the means to pour all his goodness into our lives. The moment you and I believe and accept Jesus as our Lord, he enters into our lives and saves us. By faith in Jesus Christ, therefore, we gain access to the favors of God. But then some might say that they do not need God or God's love. Paul himself explains who needs God or God's love in today's text. He writes, While we were still helpless, Christ died at the appointed time for the ungodly. In other words, Paul tells us that God's love is for those who are helpless, weak, and incapable of saving themselves and the ungodly. Jesus did not die for the self-righteous because they have no need of him. He died for the sinners because they are in need of redemption. That's why Jesus said, It is not those that are well who need the doctor, but the sick. I have come to call not the upright, but sinners to repentance. He also said, Come to me, all you who labor and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. Paul then goes on to state that there is a difference between human love and God's love. He writes, Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person, though perhaps for a good person one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us in that, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Paul seems to think that it is hard enough to find someone willing to die for a just and righteous man. And perhaps it might be possible to find somebody to die for a good man. He makes a distinction between the righteous and the good. A righteous man is being right with God, or a man who does no one any harm whereas a good man is being right with human beings or a man who does favors to people beneficial to the society. So, scarcely would one die in the place of a righteous man who is unjustly condemned to death. Some, could, some would dare to die for a good man. For example, a soldier might die to protect another soldier, thinking that his own life will be wasted on the battlefield anyway. The reason is crystal clear. It is because human love is limited, conditional and imperfect. And this is the way it is in many of our lives. We might promise others unconditional love, but in reality we tend to offer conditional love. From our childhood we try to earn the right to be loved. We try to earn it with our good behavior, by agreeing to others' wishes, or simply by just being nice. We not only try to please others in order to receive love, but also we start to expect others to please us, if they want our love. It is hard for us to love anyone who disagrees with us, who acts and thinks differently, has different beliefs, and who offends and betrays us. God's love, on the other hand, is unlimited, unconditional, and perfect. God's love is not based on feelings or emotions. He doesn't love us because we are lovable, 
or because we make him feel good or because our acts are pleasing to him. He loves us because he is love. God's name is love. God demonstrates his unconditional love for the humankind in the death of his son Jesus on the cross. Friends, Paul describes Jesus as the embodiment of God's love and in the, it is unconditional. Let me ask you some questions today. Each time you look at the cross, do you see God's love for you? Have you experienced the power of God's love? Has God's love inspired you to live a holier life? Do you thank and praise Him for His love? If you haven't experienced God's love, He is calling you today to trust in Him and experience the love that you want. Whenever we have an opportunity to worship God or look at the cross, let us first thank and praise our Lord Jesus for becoming one of us here on earth for his teachings, an exemplary life of humility, kindness, compassion, forgiveness, sharing and shedding his blood on the cross to save us from our sins. And then let us thank the Lord for all other gifts, ask his forgiveness for our shortcomings and wrongdoings. And finally, if there is any, pray for our daily needs. Amen. God bless you.